In this video, I will show you how to sketch the graph of a function so that it meets certain conditions involving limits. Looking through, let's decide which we should accomplish first. So I'm seeing uh, f at negative 1. That's the lowest number, so we're going to start with that one. Uh, let's see what's next. I see f at 1. That's the next highest number, so let's do that next. It looks like these two are the same, so um, that's just a typo. Uh, let's see, what's next? I see f at 2, so we will do that third. And then um, the value as x approaches 3 will be last. Please understand that we are drawing one example of a function f that meets these criteria, but there are many versions of function f that could be drawn. So to begin with, the value of f at negative 1 is supposed to be defined. So here is a negative 1. So if the value is defined at negative 1, then there should be a closed dot here somewhere to show that the uh, function is defined right here. In fact, this is the value of f at negative 1. But at the same time, the limit as x approaches negative 1 is supposed to not exist. So one way for that to happen is if there's a jump here. All right, if the limit as we approach negative 1 from the left is different from the limit as we approach negative 1 from the right, then the overall limit at negative 1 does not exist. So this little piece that we've graphed so far satisfies the first condition. For the second condition, we see that the limit as x approaches 1 exists, but the value of f at 1 is undefined. So as we approach 1, uh, because the limit exists, we have to approach the same value uh, from the left of 1 and from the right of 1. So in this case, the limit will exist. We're approaching the same value from the left and from the right. But right at 1, um, the function is undefined. So we could put an open circle here to show that f at 1 is undefined. But the limit still exists because we are approaching the same value from the left and the right. So this portion of the graph has now satisfied the second condition. Moving on to the third condition. The limit as x approaches 2 exists. Well, let's deal with that part first. If the limit as x approaches 2 exists, then that means we have to be approaching the same value from the left side of 2 and from the right side of 2. We have to approach the same value. So the limit exists. And f at 2 is defined. So if I filled in a closed circle right here, that would make f at 2 defined as well, but there's more. The limit as x approaches 2 does not equal the value of the function at 2. So when I filled in this circle right here, um, that made the limit and the value of the function equal. So that's no good. So if I want the limit to be different than the value of the function at 2, I need to make this an open circle and I'll put a closed circle somewhere else, like say here. So this closed circle represents the value of the function at 2. Um, but the limit is something else. So specifically, um, the limit as x approaches 2 is actually 3, because that's the value where we are. But the value of the function at 2 is 2. So we have two different things and we have now satisfied the third condition. The fourth condition says 
the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is equal to 2. Okay, the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is equal to 2. So that would be satisfied by what I'm drawing right here. Um, however, the overall limit as x approaches 3 does not exist. So that's sort of what I had going on anyway. It doesn't matter if I put an open circle or a closed circle here. Um, so far, the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is 2. And because I have this jump happening, I'll go ahead and finish this off. The overall limit um, as x approaches 3 does not exist. The limit from the left is different from the limit from the right, so the limit at 3 does not exist. So this is the final answer. Um, I'm a little bit bored by all of these horizontal lines that I drew, so I think just to mix things up a little bit, I'm going to put um, something else here on the end. It didn't need to be a horizontal line. Okay, and let's just put some arrows on the end of this to show that the function would continue. All right, so that's it for example D. Problem E. Let's start off by sort of lining these up from left to right. So I see a negative 4. That's the smallest value. So we'll start with that. And I see a 1. So that'll be next. And I see a 3. So that'll be third. And I see a 5. So that will be our fourth condition. I'm not sure why this is always identical, but we'll ignore that. The first condition says that the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right is 1. Let's draw that aspect of it. So the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right is 1. So this little segment I've drawn so far satisfies the first half of the condition. But the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left does not exist. So we have a one-sided limit that does not exist. How is that possible? Well, that will happen if you have an asymptote here. So I'm going to draw in an asymptote at negative 4. So now, as I approach uh, negative 4 from the left, I've got this asymptote happening. So therefore, the left-sided limit does not exist. And I'm going to go ahead and finish off this little segment coming in from the left. It doesn't matter if I put an open circle or a closed circle here. I'm going to put a closed circle just to show that I can. It's okay that that circle is right on the asymptote. The asymptote is only there for the left-sided limit. So this portion of the sketch now satisfies the first condition. The second condition says that f at 1 is defined. So I can go ahead and show that by putting a closed circle anywhere around here. So um, I don't know. Let's say if I put a closed circle right here. So f at 1 is now defined. What's next? But the limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. Well, an easy way for the limit to not exist is by making a jump discontinuity right here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump down here. Uh, let's connect this up with what I had going on before. All right, I'll put a little something going on right here to show that the function continues. But there we go. Now, uh, so let's double check. f at 1 is defined. Yep, the value of the function at 1 is 2. But the limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. Good, the limit does not exist because from the left and from the right, we are approaching two different values. So this portion of the sketch satisfies the first and second condition. 
The third condition says that the limit as x approaches 3 exists. Let's go ahead and do that part. So the limit as x approaches 3 exists. That means that we have to be approaching the same value from the left of 3 and from the right of 3. So this satisfies what we have so far. And f at 3 is defined. So maybe I can just put a closed circle right here. So that would make um, the value of f at 3 defined, um, and specifically the value would be 2. But let's see what else is in this condition. But the limit as x approaches 3 does not equal the value of the function at 3. Well, by putting this closed circle at the same level as the rest of the function, I've made the value of the function equal the limit as we approach 3. So um, the limit is not supposed to equal the value of the function at 3, so I just need to put my closed circle somewhere else. I'll put an open circle here. Okay, let's connect this up with what we had going on before and look back and make sure that we've done it. So for this condition, the limit as x approaches 3 exists and f at 3 is defined. So the limit exists because we are approaching the same value from the left and the right. Um, and f at 3 is defined because of the, uh, the value of the function at 3 is 1. But also, the limit as x approaches 3 does not equal the value of the function at 3. The limit as x approaches 3 is 2. The value of the function at 3 is 1. So the limit and the value are not equal, and we have satisfied condition 3. The fourth and final condition says that the limit as x approaches 5 exists. Okay, so if the limit as x approaches 5 exists, then that means we have to be approaching the same value from the left of 5 and from the right of 5. So this limit exists, but what else? Also, the value of f at 5 is not defined. So I definitely need an open circle here. And that's it. We just won't put a closed circle anywhere else. And that will leave the function undefined at 5. So this is the final answer. Um, I have bored myself with all of these horizontal lines. So I think I will put a curvy line on the end just for fun. But that is it for problem E. Let's do one more problem. These are kind of fun, aren't they? It's like a graphical puzzle. So let's start by putting these conditions in order from left to right. Um, for some reason, this one is always a duplicate, so let's disregard that. But I see a negative 3. That's the lowest number, so that will be our first condition. And then I see a negative 2 here. That will be the second condition. Then I see 0. That will be the third condition. And finally, I see a 4. That will be our fourth condition. The first condition says the limit as x approaches negative 3 exists. That means that we must approach the same value from the left of negative 3 and from the right of negative 3. So my sketch so far is indicating that the limit exists. But the value of f at negative 3 is not defined. So we will definitely put an open circle right here. And as long as we do not put a closed circle somewhere else at negative 3, we have left the function undefined at negative 3. So the first condition is met. 
For the second condition, the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left is 3. Okay, so the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left is 3. That's what we have going on so far. But let's see what else. But the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right does not exist. So we have a one-sided limit that does not exist. That can happen if you have an asymptote here. So I'm going to put an asymptote here. So that uh, the limit as we approach negative 2 from the right does not exist. So I think I'll just draw one of these. and we have achieved it. It doesn't matter whether I put an open circle or a closed circle right here. I'm going to put a closed circle just to show that I can. Um, and we need to connect the previous portion of our graph with the current portion. So I think I will just redraw this little piece so we can connect these. And we have now satisfied the second condition. Condition number three says f at zero is defined. So here's zero. So I can just put a dot anywhere on the y-axis. I'm going to put one right here. And this will show that f at zero is defined. Specifically, f at zero is three. Um, but what else? the limit as x approaches 0 does not exist. So an easy way for the limit to not exist is um, if we approach one value from the left, yet we approach a different value from the right. So there it is. f at 0 is defined, but yet the limit as x approaches 0 does not exist. Condition 4 says the limit as x approaches 4 exists. So if the limit as x approaches 4 exists, we are approaching the same value from the left and the right. So the sketch I have going so far is indicating that the limit as x approaches 4 exists. But what else? And f at 4 is defined. So I could put a closed circle right here. And now f at 4 is defined. f at 4 is 3. But what else? The limit as x approaches 4 does not equal the value of f at 4. So right now, I have the value of the function at 4 is 3 and the limit as x approaches 4 is also 3. So the way I've drawn it, those are the same. So I need to put my closed circle um, just somewhere else. So maybe I'll just put it down here, uh, leaving an open circle up here. So now, let's just double check one more time. The limit as x approaches 4 exists. Yep, we're approaching the same value from the left and from the right. Um, f at 4 is defined. Yep. Uh, f at 4 is 2. But the limit as x approaches 4 does not equal the value of f at 4. Um, we've satisfied that as well because the limit as x approaches 4 is 3, while the value of the function at 4 is 2. And now we can just uh, connect this to what we have drawn before. And let's finish off the ends of our graph. And that's the final answer for problem F.